everyone. I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my $1,000 Sephora fantasy basket. I've been seeing this video going around for quite a while already. So of course, as always, I'm late to the party. But in any case, I did think it was a really fun idea because basically the premise of this is that we have this very hypothetical narrative where you just receive a $1,000 gift card to Sephora or you have to spend $1,000 at Sephora all in one transaction. And although that sounds like the most fun and probably the easiest thing to do ever, when I sat down to like start adding products to my basket, I kind of found it to be a bit of a challenge because I was thinking about it in a very like realistic way where I was like, well, I don't need that type of product in my collection or I would never feasibly be able to use that up. But then I had to pull myself away from that thinking and just be like, girl, you got a thousand dollars to spend at Sephora. Just go for it. Just have fun. Try some products that you've had on your wish list for quite some time and just feel free to spend the fake money. Just go for it. So I am really excited to share with you guys all of the items that I picked out for my $1,000 cart. Just keep in mind, I am Canadian, so $1,000 does not go near as far for me as it does for some people in the States or other places of the world, potentially. But in any case, I tried to keep it as close to $1,000 as I could, and I got my basket to $996. And there are some products in here that I really, really, really want to try, and one day I definitely will pick them up. And then other ones, I just was kind of like... Yeah, throw it in, I'll give it a shot. And of course, I want to give credit where it's due. This video and this concept was started by Emily Noel. I will have her channel as well as her video linked in the description box of this video. So you guys should definitely go check that out if you haven't already. I'm sure if you're into the type of content that I'm into, you probably have already seen her video and you've probably seen this video a hundred times over, but I hope that you enjoy seeing my iteration of it. So let's just hop on into it. So when I first started adding items to my cart, I knew hands down the very first thing I was going to add in is this palette right here. This is the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. This is a $170 eyeshadow palette and it contains 28 eyeshadows. Yes, 28 eyeshadows that are all like greens and golds and warm browns and then there's that little pop of blue and ever since I saw this palette released I knew it's something that I want to eventually one day bring into my collection but that price tag is so steep and I do not have the budget for like luxurious makeup like that right now so one day it will be mine but in my fantasy cart it will be mine very first it would be the very first thing I would pick up because these colors are just where I feel the most comfortable. I feel like I can wear these kinds of colors in every and any context and they just work really well on my complexion and with my personal style. This is just a palette that was made for me but the price tag was not made for me. So in my fantasy cart 100% that would be the first thing I add to it and eventually one day I do think I'll pick it up for myself as like a reward or as like a token for some sort of like momentous occasion like graduating college or potentially for my birthday something along those lines but for now I will just dream about it and another Natasha Denona palette that I would love to pick up one day is the Natasha Denona mini gold palette the reason why I chose the mini gold is because it's only $33 versus $170 for the full size but I feel like this palette is actually so perfectly curated to be the five shades that I actually really love out of the palette. So I don't need the whole big $170 palette because I feel like a lot of those shades I already have in my collection, I can already dupe them. But these five that are in the mini version are the most unique and feel like they really embody that palette. And I just, I love this color scheme. Again, it's greens and browns, so it's, it's just my thing. They're absolutely beautiful and I do think one day I would like to eventually pick this up but not, it doesn't seem as likely to me that I would get that as I will eventually get the Metropolis palette. And finally for Natasha Denona I would also love to pick up her newest palette release which is this one right here. This is the bronze palette and you're thinking like that's just a neutral palette. That's kind of shocking coming from me and definitely it is a bit of a surprise to me but this is an $87 Natasha Denona palette. Again it's pretty pricey but I feel like this color scheme is so cohesive and it really would be something I could reach for every single day. I have a mix of shimmers and mattes in here, a ton of different finishes and colors. 
I feel like you could wear this every day for like a month straight and not create the same look any day. And it just looks so stunning. I've seen so many people picking this up recently and like swatching it and doing like get ready with me's with it. And it just looks like an absolute beaut. So I think that would be something that I would definitely need to pick up in this fantasy basket. But in reality, like in real life, Rebecca, I'm not sure that I would pick it up. It's tough to say because that price tag is much more alluring than $170 from the brand. Um, but I'm not sure. One day, perhaps, perhaps. Another eyeshadow palette that I would definitely pick up is this one right here. This one is by Urban Decay. This is the Naked Honey palette. And I've had my eye on this palette ever since it came out. Like ever since it was released, I've thought that palette would be such a special addition to my collection. And I definitely think one day I will pick it up, but not in the immediate future. I do feel like I've purchased quite a few and like added quite a few palettes to my collection in recent months that I wanna give a little bit more love before I purchase something new. But this is something I do think realistically one day I will add to my collection because it has those perfect warm browns and that yellow gold. These are the kinds of colors that I do feel the most comfortable in and I just think this palette is curated so well. This selection is so good. I have been kind of let down by Urban Decay's formula in the past, but I've heard amazing things about the formula of this palette, so I'd definitely love to try it out for myself. And there's one other item from Urban Decay that I would love to try out, and it's actually something that's not very new, and I don't know if I ever really see people talking about these anymore, but it's the 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in the shade Stash. Stash is this like, gorgeous smoky olive metallic shade that I feel like would look so good on my eyes and I feel like it would really complement my eye color really well and like just my general coloring very well. I've been craving a like army green or olivey green eyeliner. I really want to add one to my collection one day and so of course in my fantasy basket I would pick up the, the Urban Decay one. However, I have heard that there is a NYX one that's very comparable to this so if we're talking about reality, I'd probably pick up that one instead. Another eyeshadow palette I would definitely pick up is this one by Aether Beauty. This is the Amethyst Crystal Gemstone palette. As you can see, it's an all purple or like mostly purple eyeshadow palette and it just looks so beautiful because it has a combination of both warm and cool purples and I feel like I don't have a lot of warm purples in my collection. I don't tend to stray away from purple but I don't wear it that often maybe because of that heavy cool toned aspect that I find a lot of purples in my collection have. They kind of feel a little bit too blue, but there's these gorgeous warm, really warm um, purples in this palette that almost lean a little bit burgundy that I think would look really good on me. I just really admire Aether Beauty as a brand and I think it's really special that their brand has like crystals and gemstones in the formula as well as fully recyclable packaging and their products are very clean and they're manufactured in the USA. They're manufactured on a very small scale. And I just think everything about the values of Aether Beauty, I really do align with. So I do wanna add some of their products to my collection in the immediate future for sure, because they just look so good. Another brand that I don't have in my collection and I would love to try is Kosas. So there are two items from this brand that I would love to give a try. The first one being this one right here, which is the Tinted Face Oil Foundation. This is, I, I picked this out in the shade four. I really don't know what shade I would be, but I have swatched this in stores before and I loved the very thin consistency that this product had. And I do feel like the name tinted face oil is a little bit deceiving because it wasn't really like very oily, but it was more like a skin tint. And I do think that the word oil could be a big deterrent for a lot of people, but I actually didn't find that it felt like slippery, like an oil. It really felt quite nice on my hands, or at least on the back of my hand. But this is something I would love to give a try and actually like use on my face and have and play around with because I hear amazing things about this formula and the way that it lasts on the skin all day. I just hear so many amazing things about it and I feel like it's just totally my vibe right now. I haven't been preferring anything that is like heavy or artificial looking. I've been really liking more natural looking complexion products and lighter weight bases as well. So that just screams like everything I want in a foundation at the moment. 
I've also heard amazing things about the tinted lip oils from Kosa, so I would pick up this actually. Instead of buying just one, I would pick up this set of three. This is the Mini Wet Set Clean Lip Oil Trio. I think this would be a really good way to test the formula and to have a couple options for different shades. These just seem so effortless and so easy to just throw onto the lips. They offer hydration, they offer a little bit of shine and a little bit of color pigment without being anything too abrupt or too harsh. And that's totally been my vibe lately. I just want something that gives me a hint of color and a little bit of a flush, maybe something a little bit more interesting, better looking than just like my bare lips but nothing too harsh in terms of like creating a very crisp line. And this would just be the perfect lip product in my opinion. I feel like this would just be so comfortable and so effortless. So I have had this blush right here, the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Brilliant Nude on my Sephora Loves list for absolutely forever because I feel like it would be my dream blush. But $52 for a blush is very, very steep. <laughs> this is such a stunning color though because it is like one of those blushes that I feel like would be just not really discernible on the skin in any sort of way, but it would offer that little bit of color, that little bit of warmth to the skin and a little bit of glow because it is this amber color. So it's like a warm reddish kind of brown shade that is infused with their highlighter, I believe. I think this one, yeah, it's infused with brilliant strobe light. So it offers this like luminous finish to the skin, which I just adore on the cheeks, but it also offers a little bit of a flush of color. And I just feel like it would be absolutely perfect for any eye look, any look at all. This is like what blush dreams are made of for me. This is like my ultimate blush in theory. I mean, I have never swatched it. I don't know for sure but it just sounds right up my alley and I would love to try that out one day. And this next item is also by Hourglass. This is the Scattered Light Glitter Eyeshadow. I chose this in the shade Vivid, but quite honestly, I, it would be an absolute honor to have this in any shade whatsoever. But this shade in particular just looks so special and totally my kind of color because this is like a smoky green kind of shade. And of course, any of them would be beautiful. They just are the most magnificent looking kind of glitter top coats. But this shade is just so special and so unique. And I feel like I haven't seen this kind of glitter from or like topper kind of eyeshadow from any other brand. Vivid just looks so beautiful and so delicious to me. So definitely one day I would love to add that to my collection. But for the Time being, it's something that just seems a little bit too outrageously luxurious for me and for my lifestyle, but damn, does it ever look beautiful. And then one last item from Hourglass that I would love to pick up. I actually added this to my basket in the mini. This is the Caution Mascara. I have tried this in the past. I had a mini that I got, I think as like a code from Sephora, or maybe it was a point perk. I really can't remember but it was so good. It was so nice. It made my lashes look impeccable. So I would love to pick this up in the full size, but the budget didn't really allow for that. So I decided to get it in the mini in my fantasy basket. I don't know that I would ever pick this up in real life because I'm trying to stay away from purchasing high-end mascaras. They're just not really something that makes sense for my life, but I love my high-end mascaras. I love them so much. So if I had $1,000 to spend at Sephora, 100%, I would pick up this one. So I just realized I accidentally had this item in my basket twice. So I just went and like kind of found something else to go in its place. But I wanna talk about the item that I accidentally had duplicated because obviously I like it that much or I'm curious about it that much. It is the Briogeo Be Gentle, Be Kind Avocado and Kiwi Mega Moisture Superfoods Hair Mask. This is just a hair mask, but it sounds so delicious. It sounds so good. Avocado and kiwi, that just sounds dreamy to me. So I really have my eye on that product, but $46 is really steep for a hair mask. I don't often do a hair mask, but Briogeo is a brand that there are items from them that I didn't know that I needed until I added them to my routine and added them to my collection. 
and now I'm absolutely in love with them. So like I love the dry shampoo by Riogeo. Nothing else compares to it in my opinion. And I love the, um, the scalp revival line just as a whole. I love everything about this brand. So this is something that I definitely have my eye on. It does seem really expensive, but something about a hair mask, I do think it seems a little bit more justified in comparison to something like a shampoo because as much as I love my Briogeo shampoo, you kind of just toss it in your hair and then you run it down the drain with a mask. At least you would have it on for a little bit more of a prolonged period of time and maybe the results will last a little bit longer than like a day or two. I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to justify it. But in any case, it's something that I'm super, super interested in and would love to try out one day for sure. When I realized that I had a few dollars to spare when I removed the duplicate of that mask from my basket, I decided to add in this lipstick instead. This is the Tarte C Color Splash Lipstick in the shade Colada. This looks like such a beautiful nude kind of color for my complexion. This is like a peachy brown kind of shade. I have swatched this formula before and it feels extremely comfortable. And I hear amazing things about this formula from It's Just Steph. She talks about, I think the shade Rum Punch all the time. She freaking loves that lipstick. So I have a feeling I would really love this one too. And then also because I just, I realized I had a little bit of extra money to spend. I ended up adding a full size of the Tarte Maracuja Hydrated, Hydrating Tinted Moisturizer. I had a mini of this in my basket and then I decided, you know what? May as well go for the full size since I have a little bit of extra money to spend. This is a product that I have had my eye on since it released. Like as soon as I saw it come on the Sephora site, I was like, I want that. I really did consider purchasing it during the VIB sale, the most recent one, but I had to tell myself not to because I have been trying to use up my First Aid Beauty Tinted Moisturizer since about February and I still have yet to finish it because I kind of rotate through my base products and now I'm panning my Bare Minerals one as well and I still haven't finished any tinted moisturizers for my collection because I'm making sure to reach for them like a little bit more rotated through. So that's the reason why I never picked it up, but it is something that one day I definitely want to add to my collection. And yeah, I might as well get the full size seeing as I had a little bit of money to spare. Another lipstick that I'd love to pick up is actually quite similar to that Tarte one. This one is by Becca Cosmetics. This is the Ultimate Love, no, Ultimate Lipstick Love Lipstick in the shade Truffle. This is a warm nude kind of shade for my complexion. It, again, it's kind of that peachy brown kind of color that's just like, what I've been really into, I've come to realize that's the kind of color that really flatters my complexion and goes with a lot of eye looks that I tend to prefer and I like to wear. So that is definitely one that I would pick up. I have swatched this formula in the past and I have put it onto my lips in the past, like when these very first came out. I don't own one, but I have tried it and they are so good. They are so creamy and so luxurious feeling and they just are beautiful lipsticks. I feel like I never hear anyone talking about them, but um, yeah, if I had the opportunity to pick one up, I definitely would because I it has left a really good impression on me even after swatching it like over a year ago. It still is something that I do feel like I wanna add to my collection to this day. I've got a couple other complexion products. The first one I wanna talk about is this one right here from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Hollywood Flawless Filter thing. I don't know, this is like, has the longest name ever, but this I would pick up in the shade three light medium, I believe, maybe one shade down from that, maybe the shade two. But in any case, I have never spent my money on this because it's $53 for a product that doesn't really have a descriptor. That is what makes it really alluring and interesting to me, but it also is like, kind of makes me hesitant to purchase it because you can wear it as an all over base product. You can wear it as a like targeted highlighter. You can mix it in with different complexion products. There are so many different ways to use this product, but for some reason, that price tag really is off putting to me. Like it does definitely make me very skeptical of this product, but I hear only people raving about it. Like I do not hear one bad or negative thing about this product ever whenever it's spoken about it only is like top tier the most amazing product ever in everyone's opinion so it is something i'd love to pick up one day but i want to work my way through a couple of my liquid highlighting products 
eventually before I do add it to my collection. This has lived on my loves list for an absolute eternity and I kind of feel like it probably will for a while longer. But if I was to get a Sephora gift card and um, I didn't really have anything that I needed to replenish at the time, I would probably just pick this up because this is something that seems super special and unique and I am very curious about it. This is the Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. This just sounds like the perfect foundation because this is not a tinted moisturizer. This actually does offer more coverage than what I've kind of been preferring recently, but this just sounds like it would be the perfect foundation to wear for like longer days or more so for like going to events like weddings or dinner or something like that. So I feel like this is the standalone foundation that I would need in my collection. Of course, it's not something that I feel like I need, immediately need to pick up because I do have a couple other foundations I'm slowly working my way through. But ever since this released, I have had it in the back of my mind that I really want to pick that up one day as a replacement for other foundations from my collection. It just sounds so perfect. It sounds so good. I've heard people with different skin types love on this so much. It just, I don't know, it just looks perfect. And the final thing that I would pick up if I had $1,000 to spend at Sephora would be the Pinrose Sun Saint fragrance. I would pick up the full size of this because I have had the travel size, which is like a little spray rollerball, not rollerball. And I absolutely loved it, but I lost it. I don't know where it went. I legitimately do not know where it went. I must have had it one time on a night out last summer because I haven't had it in my collection or like in my life since this time last year and it breaks my heart. I think about it very frequently. I did actually pick up the little sampler kit during the last Sephora VIB sale. So I do have like a tiny little mini of Sun Saint that I'm slowly working my way through. But if I had $1,000 to spend at Sephora, 100% I would pick up the large size of that because I do not want to be without that fragrance. It is so good. It's like indescribable how delicious it smells and yet it's like sexy and mature but it also is like a little bit playful and fun and intriguing there's something so so good about it i love how dynamic that scent is it's not the like most long wearing fragrance but if you're wearing it for like a dinner or a night out it would be absolutely perfect or to like go to a concert it would be perfect now this is definitely becoming a fantasy basket because those kinds of things aren't happening at the moment and probably won't for quite some time. But in any case, this would definitely be something that I would love to pick up and have in my collection in the future. But that is actually everything for my $1,000 fantasy basket. The number changed, so now it's $997 is in my fantasy basket. This, like, that's just unfathomable to me. I didn't even spend that much at Sephora last year in the entire 12 months of the year so i can't imagine that i would spend that much in one transaction ever but that is the fun of sitting down and being able to do this kind of activity it was a lot of fun to think about what would i really spend my money on what would i love to add to my collection and one day some of those items definitely will be mine so yeah let me know if you guys have tried any of these products let me know your experiences with them, or what would you pick up with $1,000 to spend at Sephora. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.